I can now say with full confidence that Apple will 100% enter the AAA console industry, and here's why. Now, I know what you're about to say. They already did that back then, and it didn't turn out so well. Past performance does not dictate future results. Innovation is subject to change, often for the better, and Apple is no exception. In spite of what you think of Apple, you can't deny that they know how to sell and profit a product. It's a walk in the park for them. I can already hear all the comments saying, Apple would never do this. They're never going to compete with the big boys. Sure, pal. Sure. Just like they wouldn't compete with computers, and after that, they wouldn't compete with music players, and after that, they wouldn't compete with phones, and after that, they couldn't compete with smartwatches, and after that, they couldn't compete with smart accessories. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. The same people who said that ended up owning every one of those products at some point in their lives. And it's about to happen again. The writing is on the wall. No matter what you might think about what Apple does as a company, their job is to sell consumer electronics to, well, consumers at mass scale. And they've already got that down to a science. The only thing that's missing? A gaming console. And no, I'm not talking about that awful one just before Steve Jobs came back to Apple. And to all of you who think the same thing will happen again simply because Steve is gone for some reason, I'm talking about an Apple who doesn't rely on Steve anymore. A more experienced Apple who's learned a lot, and I do mean a lot, along the way. Apple can be many things, but stupid is not one of them. There are already rumors brewing of Apple making a soundbar to replace the flop that was the HomePod running tvOS. Wait wait a second. Running tvOS? Wait a second. It's, It's not a rumor? The HomePod is already running tvOS? Hmm. Very interesting. Question. Was anyone wondering what programs the iPad Pro would run with its M1 chip late last year? Answer, no! This, as far as I'm concerned, is the smoking gun of what's to come. Sure, you could play Call of Duty Mobile on your phone, but let's get real here. Who's going to play heavy narratives like Uncharted or The Last of Us on a screen so small, even with the larger phones, that it's near impossible to get invested in, let alone interact with thumbs rubbing against glass taking up half the screen? Enter iPad. And not just any iPad. The iPad Pro. None of the problems that plagued the iPhone are present on iPad, except really just controls, which are already easier to understand on iPad, but still not quite as intuitive as just using a controller. Enter controller support. Yes, I know it's also on iPhone, but seriously, let's be real. Who in their right mind is going to play Battlefield on a 7-inch screen at the largest, let alone try to cram a DualShock 4 in their pockets just for the sake of portability? Kind of defeats the whole purpose of mobile, doesn't it? It's time for a switch. After Nintendo had a hit run with their Wii, it was clear it wasn't aging well against the competition and needed a refresh. Enter (laughs) with... I couldn't even say it with a straight face. Enter Wii U. The defining example of whenever a company completely misses the point of what people want and an obvious cash grab to distract kids away from the coming mobile games revolution slowly pioneering their way into the market. This was a device so bad... They discontinued it five years after its release date and stopped production before their successor could even replace it. How sad is that? If you know nothing about Wii U, it's basically the video game console equivalent to the Emoji Movie. It's honestly just for the better you don't know what it is if you don't. Now it was really time for a Switch. Enter Nintendo Switch. The defining example of a comeback in the gaming industry. It had it all. Everything we wanted all along. A pocketable screen pad like the Vita, yet also have a kickstand with removable controllers that you could still take with you and continue playing whenever you wanted. And best of all, you could play all these games at home by disconnecting the controllers from the gamepad, put it on its dock to charge, and stick the game sticks into a controller rivaling that of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Finally, someone gets it. Now, if only I can carry around one less thing and get this on my phone. Enter Apple's game controller. Now, we've been hearing rumors that Apple would make its own game controller for the Apple TV for years now, and much like the Cybertruck shop of the world with its unpredictable design that no one saw coming, absolutely none of the concept artists will get this right. They're not even close. When you think of game controller, you think of PlayStation and Xbox. But when Apple thinks of game controller, they think of no controller. They've eyeballed that switch ever since it walked into the room. But that's just the question. How do we dematerialize a controller? How do we get this on that? Enter Razer Kishi, Razer Jungle Cat, and Backbone One. Apple will either buy one of these companies, Nintendo, or simply take very thorough notes. The best example I've seen is the Razer Kishi, but they just missed a huge opportunity to leapfrog Apple. 
they didn't make the controller playable when it's collapsed. Why? The Kishi Backbone 1 and even Jungle Cat are fine, but they all have the same problem. They aren't slim nor practical enough to be pocketable, giving everyone who's bought it no real incentive to actually use what they've just bought. So far, I haven't seen a single company get this right except Sataki, but I wouldn't touch that thing with an 8-foot pole given the fragile build quality of it. And the Wii 2T and Red Knight controllers are okay, but the analog sticks on the Wii 2T aren't very comfortable, and they both don't have a shape like the Sataki to comfortably grab onto with your hands, giving you no real incentive to use it disconnected from your phone at home as your main gaming controller. And if anyone knows who has pulled off something like the Sataki, but with better build quality, especially in terms of its analog sticks, please tell me. I'd be ecstatic to be wrong. But as of this recording, my search continues. I know what the hardcore gamer is about to say. No, absolutely not. I have way too many devices to charge as it is, and that's just another thing to keep track of, and I actually love that it just plays as soon as you plug it into the port. You've obviously never understood the underlining importance Apple puts into the convenience of its products. Apple is a big boy, and it has proven itself to know how to solve these extremely easy to solve problems that people somehow think Apple won't consider solving. Exhibit A, AirPods. Exhibit B, one time pairing method. Boom. Done. If you're seriously going to complain about having to keep track of charging another thing, consider yourself for a second. Even the human body needs to recharge. Why should everything that dematerializes everything in your life be any different? If you're a true futurist, you'll recognize that the more things need to charge by wires, the more demand we'll start seeing for wireless power. Pretty soon we won't even have to worry about charging anything in the next decade or two from now anyway. Now the way I see it, Apple will do one of two things. They'll either one, make the iPhone sides mag safe and remove lightning on the other side so that magnetic game sticks could fit, making it easier to take on and off of not just the iPhone, but also a controller similar to how the Nintendo Switch works. Or two, make a controller that opens up to put your phone in it without the incredibly frustrating and fragile folding method the Razer Kishi handles it, and when collapsed, is still playable for use on your Apple TV and Mac, which I think will be more likely. Why else would Apple round off the edges of the iPhone 12 line without mentioning hardly any of the benefits? Could it be to fit it comfortably into something that's shaped just like it? Hmm. Interesting. And if you still have doubt that Apple would ever enter this industry just because it's less profitable than the dumbed-down mobile games, they already are. Apple isn't just going to profit from the mobile games or the AAA games. They'll do it from both. At this point, why wouldn't they? What could possibly stop them? Oh, that's right. The games themselves. Enter Accusation. Now, we all know Apple's love-hate relationship with Microsoft, so I think that rolls out Xbox, who honestly doesn't have much exclusives anymore anyway. That just leaves us with PlayStation and Nintendo. And I don't know about you guys, but as much as I'd love to see PlayStation and Apple have a date night, it's pretty obvious where Tesla's going with its vision. They'll be the ones that make the first move to Sony. So that just leaves Nintendo. Now, honestly, guys, as far as I'm concerned, Apple already has Nintendo. And if you don't believe me, just go to the App Store and search Nintendo. Basically, every title Nintendo's made that matters is already on iOS. And even more important, heavy hitters coming soon. Honestly, at this point, the only real thing that Apple could gain from Nintendo is the controller itself, which Apple could honestly just take notes from anyway, and officially owning all of Nintendo's titles. It's not exactly like Nintendo really has any graphically demanding titles that would be hard to port over to iOS. Nintendo needs Apple far more than Apple needs them. Which brings me to my next point. The competition. <laughs> What competition? Seriously. Apple has more games than PlayStation and Xbox combined, and they haven't even made a game console yet. Let that sink in. Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo have absolutely nothing that matters that Apple doesn't except the games themselves. But that's about to change. A whole lot sooner than people think. And to those who are about to tell me that the graphical performance of a PS5 would absolutely smoke an iPhone, you're absolutely right. For now. But frankly, even with that being true, even if the iPhone can never, ever match the graphics of a PS5, it, it doesn't really matter. If you're about to tell me how much better a PS5 upgrade is over a PS4 compared to an iPhone 12 upgrade from an iPhone 11 in terms of gaming, ask yourself why it is that people buy the PS5 over the PS4 in the first place anyway. Graphical performance, right? Eh, <coughs> wrong. What was plaguing the PS4 that almost caused Nintendo Switch to give PS4 a run for its money? Oh yeah, the loading times. 
who cares how much better a game looked than your competitors graphically if you had a one-day update with every game that could last hours, even days to download, never mind waiting for the graphically demanding gameplay just to load the game itself after. Eventually, people finally realized that while the Nintendo Switch was graphically worse than everything else, it wasn't a whole lot worse to even be noticeable, and the volume portability made up tenfold for it. Just like how 4K TVs didn't really attract people away from their already good HD TVs, graphics in the gaming industry have now unquestionably reached their peak and are heading down the same dreadful fate. People won't really be able to notice the difference without a 4K TV, and a lot of people don't even have one to view it on in the first place. The number one reason people love the PS5 isn't because of the graphics that no one will even notice anyways, it's because of the time slicing in half while retaining those same graphics. Think about what that says about the phone you're watching this video on right now. At some point, it really won't matter how much better the graphics get, especially on a screen so small, even on the max size phones, that you'd have to be squinting your eyes to even notice the difference anyway. It's game over for all other major console companies. PlayStation and Xbox are scared out of their minds of even the thought of Apple making their own controller, let alone console. Literally, all Apple has to do is make the controller mentioned earlier and finally, finally give app developers the choice to require a controller for their games. But it would only be Apple's. This way, they could incentivize the AAA big boys to come to iOS while making fat wads of cash along the way. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel for these heavyweights, and there is a way they could not only save themselves, but also make more money and have bigger fan bases than they already are in the process, and they already know it. Instead of making another box with the next number slapped on the side, why not make and sell those games directly from any device? That's right, I'm talking about PlayStation and Xbox becoming developer companies publishing games. Bet you thought I was going to say cloud gaming, didn't you? Nope, publishing games is where it's at. Think about it. Who already has exclusive titles that you can't find anywhere else? Oh, that's right, PlayStation and Xbox. And who's already got a giant loyal fan base regardless of what they put out? Oh, that's right, PlayStation and Xbox. And if they're smart, they'll do this. And if they're not... Oh... Oh no, they're not, are they? Oh, Sony, Microsoft, what are you doing? Did you not learn the lessons from Google's mistake? But jokes aside, I actually do think that there is a market for game streaming. But it's not the one that matters. Not in mass, anyway. That said, I think they're doing what they think they should be doing now for themselves, but not doing what they could be doing for everyone later. Game companies have absolutely no concept of future-proofing themselves. They never have, and they might never will. Similar to how internal combustion engine vehicle companies miss the point of electric cars and will either go bankrupt or get acquired, I think the same could be said about Sony and Microsoft's ignorance and unwillingness to change for the better. If you're seriously going to go through all this trouble to stay relevant and give the average consumer a worse experience staying tethered to Wi-Fi or cellular for games that are so demanding it's going to eat away your Wi-Fi or cellular bill, not to mention already paying monthly for some games that you don't even play, waiting for some games that may never even come to your service then you might as well have just ported them over to iOS in the first place anyways. It's never a given your connection will be good, or even work for that matter. Why would you put all your games in one basket? Apple knows this, and that's why they've waited patiently all these years for game companies to walk in a trap of their own making. Why has Apple waited so long to enter this industry? One word and one letter. M1. Apple has been waiting years, even decades, with an S to get to this point. Why else would they cut software support of the most inferior performing hardware in their lineup year over year? Because Apple is greedy and forces you to buy their next iPhone! Okay, now that the lazy answer is out of the way, if you consider yourself a futurist like me, you'll understand that the more people we get to adopt to a better standard, the better the overall experience will be for the end user later on. Yes, that is very sad and unfortunate that you know in the back of your mind that you'll eventually get left behind if you don't let your old phone go after a few years. But at the same time, it's also exciting to know what you'll be getting with the value that comes with that sacrifice in the long run. It's necessary. And especially in terms of mobile gaming, it is very necessary. This is it. This is the big one. This is the reason Apple seems to be so quiet and uninnovative these days. They're about to set free their Trojan horse they've been developing for years to catapult them 10 years ahead of everyone else who finally caught up with them on their previous Trojan horse, the iPhone. Think about it. 
We've all seen what the Mac is capable of running with its new chip, and we're already seeing what the iPad Pro can do. All that's left is the phone that started it all, the final frontier to have games made and played across all platforms. The iPhone is now the last of the major device segments having yet to support the M1 chip. What if I told you in terms of shrinking down an M1 to fit inside an iPhone, it already basically is in an iPhone? To all the gamers who are still hesitant on believing this, just because the truth of Apple making it into the industry isn't immediate doesn't mean it's not there. It's already here, and it'll only get better from here on out. And also consider this, if you look back historically, Apple has never made a single original product. But that's not why people love them. It's because Apple will wait patiently until someone finishes Apple's job for them, and what'll Apple always do next? Make it better or easier to understand for the masses, completely crushing the efforts made by their competitors. A prime example of this is AirTags. Nobody thought Tile had any competition up until Apple made their own trackers with their U1 chip and pairing method, unparalleled with any other method on the market. And I'm calling it now. At WWDC next year, they will surprise everyone in the gaming community by unleashing the full power of Game Center and finally giving it social media sharing features. Not just on iOS, but also tvOS, H heck, it may be even macOS. Yet we'll still hear gamers be unhappy about exactly what they asked for for some reason. This isn't wishful thinking, it's critical thinking. So it really begs the question, is Apple developing their own gaming console? Now I've already touched on the new HomePod running tvOS, but there's a little more context we need to add. Apple won't have a gaming console, they'll have four, all powered by the M1 chip. The gaming console itself, the iPad Pro, the iPhone Pro, and maybe even the Mac. There was an Apple leaker who said we'd be getting two Apple TVs, one with a crappy A12 chip and one with the A14X chip, or probably an M1 chip. Guess what? He was right. The Apple TV crap edition is already out. Now we just have to wait for the game one, which will be unveiled this September. How do I know that? Another leaker says we will actually be getting a gaming-focused event this September, and the iPhone 13 will basically look like a kindergartner next to it. That, or it'll be two and a half years from now, whichever comes first. Wait. Wait a second. It's already out? For developers? I guess this must mean more games like Crossy Road and Angry Words, right guys? Of course not! This is smoke leading to the fire, and it infuriates me to my core that more people aren't talking about this. Do you seriously believe that Apple, being the money eater it is, would send out an Apple TV so powerful and so capable to game developers that it could escort Sony and Microsoft to its grave just for Apple to sit on its hands and keep making Candy Crush ripoffs? Really? And I can already hear more gamers in the chat saying Apple would never do that. They make way more money just making dumbed down versions of games than making AAA titles. Who says they can't make money off of both? Yes, Apple does make more of a profit on cheap crap mobile games than they do AAA titles. But they could also make profits from doing both. It's the developers who make these games anyway, why would it matter to Apple? Nothing's stopping developers from making both. So why wouldn't they? Come on, people. It could take years to develop just one game. So considering this was sent out late last year, we're just about due to see what devs come up with. I think it's pretty obvious what's going on. Why else would Apple be pouring millions into Apple Arcade? Why else would they finally open up controller support to the PS4 and Xbox One controllers, and now PS5 and Xbox X controllers, after years of notoriously not allowing it? Oh, just to make Temple Run sequels, right? Ugh. We literally have not one, not two, but three leakers saying Apple will make a gaming controller. Just think. Think, people. And to those asking why Apple would need to develop another Apple TV right before a new one will replace it, the answer is quite simple, actually. They had to. Whether they liked it or not, just to keep the Apple TV line alive due to not wanting an assembly line of A10X Fusion chips, and needing an excuse to phase it out and replace it with a much more convenient A12 Bionic processor. And if you're about to ask me why it is they would even present this on stage and not just have a website refresh for it if it wasn't something they're proud of, it's because they want to phase it out. They want to get rid of it. Also, they probably needed the event to run a certain specific time so they just filled it with a new Apple TV remote fluff. Similar to how they differentiated the iPhone and iPads from the Pro iPhones and Pro iPads, they'll do the same again for Apple TV. They'll finally recognize it as a completely different product that will now dematerialize not only your game console, but your games and soundbar as well. And I think that's why the Apple TV they literally just announced is actually worse in some cases than the Apple TV before it. They're finally making just a regular plain vanilla Apple TV and a new Apple TV Pro. 
Why else would they remove gaming features from their new remote? Oh yeah, to put a gyroscope and accelerometer into a game controller. The new Apple TV will obviously be running the M1 chip because how could it not? Along with a terabyte model, a terabyte and a half, or maybe even two terabytes like the iPad Pro, who knows? It will also have 16 gigabytes of RAM, maybe a little less like eight or something like that, but I think, I, I think I'm gonna stick with 16. Along with this new controller mentioned earlier and rumors of an Apple Arcade Plus subscription developing, you guessed it, AAA console quality games on your iOS devices, boom, done. And to sweeten the deal, Apple will offer a free year subscription to Apple Arcade Plus to anyone who buys this, similar to what they did when Apple TV Plus came out. But what about the average consumer? They don't care about this. That's exactly right. And I'm calling it now. Apple Arcade Plus will only be available for the Pro line of Apple's hardware, which means if you want AAA exclusive titles from Apple on the go with you that you can't find anywhere else, you're gonna have to shell out a few more hundreds for that Pro iPhone. I'm putting every game developer on notice to port your game to iOS, macOS, and tvOS now before it's forgotten about. Because whether anyone wants to admit it or not, we're in the middle of a coming paradigm shift that's gonna come a whole lot sooner than people think. In fact, it's already taking place. Just look at EA Sports, racing games, fighting games, Battle for Bikini Bottom, Minecraft, Knights of the Old Republic, and now first person shooters recently gaining popularity like Call of Duty. I could go on all day long. So what comes next? After consoles were popular, people started to very slowly dwindle away to, you guessed it, smartphones. So gaming companies had an idea, an idea so crazy that it just might work. Enter virtual reality. Virtual reality headsets like the HTC Vive and PlayStation VR took the gaming world by storm. And it's still the main reason gamers are so excited about the future of gaming. So it begs the question, what will Apple's answer be to this? Enter artificial reality. If you haven't been following Apple's big push into AR apps, you'll start to realize that it's obvious they want this to be the future. Not for people today, but for people tomorrow. Enter smart glasses. Before anyone in the comments even dares to compare Google Glasses and whatever weird thing Microsoft has to Apple, they're not competition. They're bad, sometimes even sad jokes. <laughs> Whenever Apple comes along and enters a new market, what happens? If your answer was they completely decimate virtually everyone else as soon as they enter that field, congratulations, you answered correctly. So with all this being said, will Apple take over the VR gaming world by storm the first day it comes out? N no. Hell no. Th not even close. At least, not at first. And if you think that statement is crazy, think about the iPhone when it first came out. What was it used for? And who was it made for? It was a communications and music device that was mainly used for very basic productivity in browsing Safari. Much the same way that their iPhone was on day one, their smart glasses will be. Basic. Room for improvement. An infrastructure and fluid operating system that hasn't been perfected yet. But that's okay. Because consider how far we've come with that sheet of glass. Imagine what a decade will look like on a pair of smart glasses. This is Apple's very, very long-term goal. And as far as the competition is concerned, I honestly really don't think it matters what Android or Samsung or whoever comes up with something. Just put yourself in the developer's shoes and ask yourself one simple question. Which of these two platforms will make me the most money? A, the one that lets me develop my game to run off its very specific standards just for a single type of phone that could be drastically differently designed internally than the literal hundreds of other phones that Maker makes, never mind their computers and tablets, in order to simply run my game on. Or B, the one that'll let my game work with only one type of chip that'll work with virtually every other product it makes if I just make my game one time for one type of one device let alone the fact that each of these devices it's made on is the top selling device in its class with the most users in its field. Let's not forget the PS4 won out against the Xbox One in cells whenever it came out because at the end of the day, Sony realized what was truly important to gamers. The games. The games are what really matters. Similar to Netflix when it future-proofed itself with exclusive movies and TV shows, Sony did the same thing with franchises and exclusives on PS4, which still sells more PS5s than Xbox Xs. I was actually going to buy a gaming console just before making this video, but after simple research, it's made me realize I already have one. And so do all of you. You just don't know it yet.